If a metal is burnt in oxygen with a violet flame, that metal must be potassium. The product formed is then dissolved in water. So firstly, if we have to name the metal, in an exam, you can't write K. You need to say potassium. That's the name of that particular metal. Write a balanced chemical equation for the oxidation. In other words, it burning in oxygen. So it's K plus O2. A metal plus oxygen gives me a metal oxide. And in this case, it's going to be K2O. And I need a balancing 4 in front of the potassium. Write a balanced chemical equation for the reaction of the product of 1.2 when it is dissolved in water. So I'm going to go, not 2, I'm just going to say potassium oxide in water is going to give me potassium hydroxide. And in order to balance that, I need a 2 in front. Is the solution with the dissolved product acidic or basic? Whenever I've got a metal oxide, metal oxides are always basic. And what colour would the above solution be if I put universal indicator in? We now expect it to know that universal indicator turns blue or purple if it's going to be in a basic solution and it will turn red, yellow, orange if it is in an, in an acidic solution. There are some things that the um, tutorial is going to make sure that we know. In what liquid is lithium stored? It kind of came up in videos that all of the group 1 elements react vigorously with both oxygen and water. So we can't store them in the air and we can't store them underwater. So what do we store them under? And all of the group 1 elements are stored under paraffin. Another name for paraffin, if you see it in a textbook, is mineral oil. I think it might have two F's anyway. What is observed when sodium is placed in water? We need to say that it floats. That's very important. Group 1 elements float in water. It darts on the surface. And uh, because it's giving off hydrogen, a flame will pop. Write a balanced chemical equation for when sodium is placed in water. Sodium in water. Any metal plus water is going to give me the metal hydroxide plus hydrogen gas. And then we double check whether it is balanced and it looks like we are going to have to put a 2 over there and then a 2 there and then a 2 there. Does copper react with steam? And the answer to that question is no. Copper is unreactive with steam. Write a balanced chemical equation for each of the following. Now this is the next thing that we need to work out from all of the experiments that we've done, and that is that potassium is the most reactive of the metals we've worked with, then sodium, then lithium. In other words, group 1 is more reactive than, let's say, group 2. And the lower you go in group 1, the more reactive it is going to be. The next elements we worked with are um, calcium is more reactive than magnesium which is more reactive than, now if I go to group 3, aluminium, which is more reactive than, say, zinc, which is more reactive than iron, which is more reactive than copper. This is called a reactivity series, and we are expected to know it. So now what's going to happen is we'll have some general equations. Let's quickly do them. Magnesium plus hydrochloric acid is going to form magnesium chloride plus hydrogen. The next one is when we start to have to look at this reactivity series. I've got zinc sulfate, a salt, and magnesium metal. What happens is because magnesium is more reactive than zinc, it displaces zinc from its salt. It kicks zinc out. So I am going to say, starting with zinc 2 sulfate, which is ZnSO4, and add magnesium, Magnesium will now get the partner because it is more reactive and zinc will be left out in the cold and that's balanced already. If I now put lithium and copper nitrate, which is CuNO32, lithium is more reactive than copper so it is going to kick the um, 
the copper out and we'll get lithium nitrate and copper will be left out in the cold. In order to balance that equation, I just need to put a 2 over there. Um, potassium oxide and nitric acid, any metal oxide and an acid is going to give me a salt plus water. So it's going to be potassium nitrate. Sorry, that's an arrow, not a plus. And water, H2O. And I'm going to need to put a 2 there and a 2 over there. And then the last one, <coughs> calcium carbonate and sulfuric acid. Calcium carbonate plus sulfuric acid gives me metal and gets together with the sulfate ion, so I get calcium sulfate plus carbon dioxide plus water and that's balanced. Lead oxide is placed in a test tube and heated, PbO2 decomposes into lead and oxygen. Write a balanced chemical equation to show what is going to happen. What type of a reaction is this? It's a decomposition. And is it exothermic or endothermic? Um, I'm having to add heat all the time. I have to keep it heated, so it is going to be a endothermic reaction. It's taking heat in all the time. Endo, taking heat in. Decomposition. In what liquid is phosphorus stored? Phosphorus is stored under water because it reacts vigorously with the air. Obviously water is cheaper than mineral oil and if you can store under water you would choose water but it's because it reacts violently with, with um, oxygen. What color flame does phosphorus burn in oxygen with? We're looking at a yellow flame. Describe how you would produce the following gases in the laboratory and how you would test for each of those gases. So you are going to put zinc into hydrochloric acid into zinc. Remember it says describe, so you can't just do what I've done here. You need to describe. Add hydrochloric acid to zinc hydrogen. Gas would give, be given off. Bring a flame close to it. It will make a pop sound. Take hydrogen peroxide for oxygen. Add manganese dioxide as a catalyst. Bring a glowing splint close to it. It will reignite. Take calcium carbonate and hydrochloric acid. Collect the gas. It will turn clear lime water milky. Again, remember to answer the question, which is that there's actually a description required. The metal burns in oxygen with a blinding white flame to form a white powder. If this powder were dissolved in water containing a few drops of universal indicator, what color change would you expect? You still haven't had to identify anything because any metal oxide is always going to give you a basic solution and universal indicator is going to be blue or purple. Why? Because it is basic. Identify the metal that reacted. Well, the blinding white flame is absolutely typical of magnesium. Now we have to fill in all of these tables and you will have something similar to this in your class test. So, if sodium burns in oxygen, you've got a yellow flame, that's the balanced equation, the product is sodium oxide. Calcium oxide, metal oxide in water with universal indicators turning blue or purple, balanced equation, calcium hydroxide forms. Sulfur dioxide in water forms sulfurous acid, not sulfuric, and you've got a balanced chemical equation, it will turn universal indicator either orange, red, or yellow. Phosphorus burns in oxygen with a yellow flame. You've got phosphorus and oxygen giving you either phosphorus pentoxide or phosphorus with stock notation and a 5 oxide. And then finally, you've got calcium carbonate in hydrochloric acid. You're going to get bubbles given off. That's your observation. You're going to have the balanced equation and your products are calcium chloride, water and carbon dioxide. Labels of zinc powder and silvery powder have been removed, silver powder have been removed, and you've got some copper sulfate. How would you identify the metals? Now, we do know that if I put zinc 
and copper sulfate together that zinc is more reactive than copper so it's going to steal the partner and leave copper out in the cold and we would see this blue color getting lighter and lighter and we would see a red deposit coming out, a reddish brown deposit. If on the other hand I put silver with copper sulfate, they remind me of this by the way, silver is more stable than copper, it's less reactive, more stable means less reactive and therefore there's going to be no reaction and that's how you'd be able to tell them apart. We decided not to do 10, 11 and 12.1 12.2, how does the reactivity of the alkali metals increase on the periodic table? And the, if you're just looking at the first group, you're going to find that going down, it becomes more and more reactive. Remember how explosive that cesium in water was. So the direction is going down.